This episode of Lex Out Loud is brought to you by the patrons of Starwalker Studios. Learn how you can support the show at starwalkerstudios.com slash support. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Lex Out Loud, world building for science fiction. I'm your host, Lex Starwalker. I'm working on my third novel, my first science fiction novel, and I'm taking you along with me for the ride. Today, I'm going to tell you an easy and a free way to get access to all kinds of ebooks and audiobooks and all without even leaving your house. So I hope you're doing well today. Uh, things, things are going pretty well over here. Definitely feeling better than last time, I think it was. We actually got to go out to eat last night for the first time in over a year. So that was pretty cool. Definitely nice to uh, get out into the world again. So that was nice. I do have a quick announcement to make. I've added a new domain to my website over at starwalkerstudios.com. So I now also have the domain lexstarwalker.com. So you may, if you pay attention to such things, you may notice when you're on your website that it now says lexstarwalker.com. But the uh, the old URLs still work and, and will still work for, for some time. I'll probably keep uh, the old domain, at least for another year or so. But uh, yeah, so so you can either go to starwalkerseos.com or lexstarwalker.com. They, they both go to the same place. Also, I, I did get one piece of feedback from a patron about the last episode when I was talking about episode length. And he said that, or she, I'm, I'm not sure, actually, they said that uh, last week's episode was a little short for them. And that episode, episode 22, clocked in at just over 20 minutes long. So um, at least for one of you, 20 minutes was too short, which I tend to agree. Um, that is that is pretty short. Um, so I'm thinking maybe 30 minutes is, is a good sweet spot for me to shoot for, at least right now. Um, we'll see how this episode goes. I, I feel like this one hopefully <laughs> will be around 30 minutes. So um, we'll see how this one comes out and, and what people think of it. As far as an uh, update on my current project and, and how that's going, I'm still going at it, still doing the uh, brute force writing. And currently, just before recording this, I checked um, my word count is up to 21,693 words, which I believe, I was just looking at this a little while ago, I believe that's actually enough for a novella, which, uh, I mean, it's not a, it's not a complete story yet, so it couldn't really be a novella, but the, uh, the word count. Yeah. A novella is between 17,500 and 40,000 words according to Sifwa. And, uh, yeah, so, so I'm in the novella range already, you know, since I have this up, let me go ahead and, uh, share this with you just really quickly here. I am just looking up Sifwa real quick so I can tell you what that actually means because um, I never remember it exactly. Okay, it's the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. And I think that's why I can never remember what it is because the, the acronym, or it's not an acronym, but the SFWA, it's missing an F there. <laughs> it should really be SFF. WA. So it always confuses me when I'm trying to remember what those letters stand for because there's one fewer Fs than there should be. But anyway, it, it's a science fiction and fantasy writers of America, kind of like the guild for uh, genre writers in the US. You know, now that I say that, I'm not sure if there's a separate organization for, for instance, um, horror writers, which is genre fiction, but is not science fiction or fantasy or if they just lump that in there with, yeah, I don't know. I, I have a feeling horror is lumped in there too. So if that's the case, you know, sorry to all the horror fans that, that it doesn't actually get to be part of the name. But yeah, so anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. So Sifwa 
put out in, in, I don't know if these have changed. I got these numbers quite a while ago, but these are, are their kind of guidelines for the different types of stories as far as word count. So for those of you who aren't writers or who've never thought about writing professionally um, or writing seriously, you, you may have never paid attention to word counts before. Um, and, and so when I tell you my word counts, it, it may mean nothing to you. But word counts give you a general idea of the type of thing you're looking at. Um, so at least according to the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, a short story is under 7,500 words. A novelette is between 7,500 words and 17,500 words. And then a novella is between 17,500 words and 40,000 words. And then a novel is over 40,000 words. And, you know, I've mentioned before on the show when, when I talked about, you know, word counts and things like that, that it really depends a lot on your genre. Um, and this is the perfect illustration of that because this is saying a novel is over 40,000 words. However, if you're talking fantasy and or science fiction, most of those novels are between 90,000 and 115,000 words. Um, so they're starting at more than twice the length of what's considered a novel and 115,000 words. That's almost three times the minimum length of a novel. So yeah, they, I mean, there it's just a fact <laughs> that a lot of these books in these genres are, are much longer as far as pages or word count than a lot of the other genres and novels out there. Because again, to, to be a novel, it only needs to be 40,000 words. I'm over halfway there already and I'm just getting started. Um, so, so yeah. So I, I'm still working on this. Let me deal with my notes here. Yeah, I started uh, printing out my, my show notes again. Um, when I first started podcasting years and years ago, <laughs> this is how I did it. Um, but then I started just having my notes on, on my computer screen, but this computer, um, I have, it's old now it's over, I think it's over 10 years old. Uh, but I originally built it for gaming. So it has a lot of fans. <laughs> it makes a lot of noise. Um, and yeah, it occurred to me the other day, I was like, you know, I could re greatly reduce the background noise of my recordings by not having my computer on. Um, but then I have to print my show notes. And, and the reason I would have the computer on in case anyone's curious, is just because a lot of times I'd, I'd end up wanting to look something up, Googling something or looking up something on Wikipedia while I'm recording. And that just made that that easier. But but yeah, um, I don't do that so much with this show. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd try doing it, going analog again, reduce some of that noise, um, which hopefully you won't tell much of a difference because I'd take that noise out. But But it might make the fidelity of the recording a little bit better. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm still doing the brute force writing. Uh, I started a fifth story now. And in this one, I'm starting to explore who I think will be the main character for the book. And uh, I think I talked about this a little bit before a couple episodes ago when I was talking about these four stories I was working on. But I've given more thought to what I'm going to do with those, if anything. And I, I pretty much decided that the majority of what I've written so far, um, I think three of those four stories uh, will actually be part of this prequel story. So right now I'm thinking once I get going on the main story, I'm just going to put all this prequel stuff on the back burner and someday in the future, maybe uh, I'll come back to it and, and finish it. I mean, that could change. It could be that I just get all caught up in this prequel story and decide just to write that. But But as of now... Um, I'm looking at that as more of kind of an exercise just to help me uh, get familiar with the setting and decide what I want to do and not planning for that to be part of the book and not planning for that to be something I really work seriously on anytime in the near future. Probably not until I've written at least two or three novels in the, the setting, if, if not more. Because yeah, nobody wants a prequel, right? Well, not nobody, but most people would rather have the next book in the thing than, than a prequel, right? So, you know, the best time to do a prequel is, you know, if I'm doing trilogies or, or whatever series length I'm doing would be at the end of one of those before I start the next one. 
Um, so people aren't waiting for the next book and instead I give them a prequel because that really annoys people. And and I think there's some justification to that. The, the one time I've seen it done that it did not bother me was uh, with The Wheel of Time. Um, at some point in there, Robert Jordan put out a prequel novel called um, New Spring, uh, which I really, really enjoyed. So, so part of that was just it was a prequel done right because it was taking a couple favorite characters from the main stories and and telling you more about their past and and re- and showing you things that had been referenced in the main story and and kind of showing you how that went down, which is really cool. And also, um, you know, I haven't looked at the publication dates, but as someone that was reading that series as it was coming out, um, it, it always seemed like there was a new book every year. Like, I don't recall ever just waiting what seemed like a really long time for the next book. So, you know, maybe that's not true, but at least from my perspective, it seemed like he was able to do that prequel without delaying the next book coming out. Um, on the other hand, there have been some authors who I'm not going to mention by name, who've put out prequels or other stories in the world for a series that, that they have not finished yet. And that frankly, we've been waiting far too long for. So that's, that's a whole different thing. That is something I personally would never do. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I stand now, but you know, a common thing that said among writers, especially when you're, you know, a newer writer is that a lot of time you're going to throw out the first few chapters of whatever you're writing anyway, because a lot of times that's for you and it doesn't need to be part of the story. It's a lot of establishing and backstory and things like that that the reader doesn't care about. Um, so it's very, very common, e- even for, you know, writers that have been doing this for a long time to, you know, when they take that first draft, they end up chopping out the first however many chapters from the beginning um, and instead starting the story where things actually get interesting, which sometimes it takes us a while to, to ramp up to that. I've had a couple new ideas that I'm kicking around. Um, one of them would actually be a pretty big change to what I've been saying I'm going to do so far. I'm still pondering it. It definitely would be something I'd probably be excited to do. Um, it would be fun. It would definitely kind of add a new element. But it's also something I've been thinking all along I wouldn't do. So I don't know. I have to think about it. And yeah, you notice I'm being a little vague. I think at this point, I'm going to have to start being uh, very careful about what I talk about on this show as far as details that I share, because the story isn't finished yet. So I may not right now know if something will end up being a spoiler or not. You know, there there could be something that right now I'm thinking, oh, this isn't a spoiler, and I tell you about it, and then later... I decide, oh, that's actually going to be be a secret that isn't revealed until later. And now I've already spoiled it to to everyone that listens to this. So I would hate for that to happen. I'd hate to share some detail now that later ends up being a huge spoiler and and ruins the book for all of you. So I'm going to be really careful and and not give a lot of specifics a lot of times. So that's, that's why. I'm not just trying to be obtuse for the sake of it. So today I wanted to tell you about someone that might end up being your new best friend. And her name is Libby. If you're in the Discord, you you may already know about this or you may already know about this anyway, because I I think I talked about this a little bit in the Discord. But this was news to me not that long ago, a few years ago. And I only know about it because of my wife. But it seems like a lot of people don't know about this. So if you already know all about this, I I apologize for this, but I have a feeling that more of you don't know about it than know about it, at least from what I've seen. So I talk a lot about technology on the show, especially cutting edge and upcoming technology that improves our lives. And that's kind of what we're talking about today is, is another way that technology has made our lives better. And that's all about your local library and, and how you can interact with and use your local library. So a lot of people don't actually realize that most all, I think all libraries these days have ebooks and audiobooks. So not only do they have traditional dead tree <laughs> books, but they also have ebooks and audiobooks. Most or all libraries 
also have some kind of an app that you can use, which allows you to check out ebooks and audiobooks remotely. The app that I use that, that my library uses is called Libby, L I B B Y. I think a lot of libraries use it. it it's a very well made app, very nice and user friendly. Um, it's available on Android and Apple on their uh, respective app stores. You can find it, L I B B Y. I have link, links in the show notes, but it should be easy to find. But even if they don't use that particular app, your your library probably has an app. So um, if this is new to you and you're interested in this, you want to um, talk to your library and and first make sure that they do have audiobooks and ebooks, and then uh, figure out or find out what what kind of app they use for people who want to check things out uh, remotely. But as I said, Libby is a pretty popular app, and chances are good that's that's what they use. So all you need to, to do what I'm talking about today is you need that app, whatever app your library uses, and you need a library card. Now, oh, I, I guess I should say this is for the United States. I'm in the United States. So if you're in another country, none of this may be relevant to you. I have no idea. Um, I don't even know how libraries work in Canada, much rather um, places in Europe and elsewhere in the world where people listen to the show. So um, I have no idea. But I'd say uh, chances are good that you probably have something similar, if not exactly the same. So definitely look into it. So the app is free. Um, library cards are free, at least here in the US. Um, so this doesn't cost you anything at all other than the small amount of time it takes you to get a library card if you don't already have one. So using the app, you can check out ebooks and audiobooks. You can place holds on ebooks and audiobooks. So if, if you go to look up a book in the app and your library has it, but it's already checked out. You can put a hold on it, which says when whoever has a book returns it, I would like it next. Um, it will tell you how many people are in line in front of you, how many copies there are, and it will give you an estimate of how long it will be before you can get the book. In my experience, the estimate is usually, it you usually get it a lot sooner than what the estimate says. I think the estimate is assuming that everybody keeps the book the maximum time, which at least for my lab- library, I think for most libraries, is two weeks. So it seems like the the app assumes that everybody's going to take two weeks with the book. And I think a lot of times people don't. And so you get it sooner. By the way, you can also use the app to reserve or check out or place a hold on physical books as well. Not just ebooks and audiobooks. It's just most useful for the ebooks and audiobooks because a physical book obviously you're going to have to go pick up the book but with ebooks and audiobooks you don't it's delivered to you electronically you never have to leave your house or actually go to the library which is awesome especially if you're still in some kind of quarantine conditions and let's face it i i'm sorry if i'm the one to break this to you but but this pandemic thing is just the beginning there will be many more of these pandemics so um yeah, this will, I'm sure, be useful in the future as well. So, you know, let's say you you want to get a book, like maybe On Writing by Stephen King. You decide, you know, do I want to get the physical book? Do I want to get the ebook, Or do I want to get the audio book? Um, let's say you want to get the, the ebook and it's already checked out. You put it on hold. Um, the app gives you an estimate will, when that will be available. And then um, once that book is available, the app will let you know, hey, your book on writing is ready to be checked out. And then at that point, you can either check it out. Um, you can delay. I think it's like a day or two. It'll let you wait to check out before it gives it to the next person. Um, or you can say, you know what? And I do this a lot because I have a lot of books on hold. Um, you can say, you know what, I don't really have time for this book right now. So you can say, Hey, go ahead and give it to the next person and let me get another chance at it after they're done, which is a super cool feature. I use that all the time. Cause like I said, I have a lot of books I've requested. And so sometimes a whole bunch of them will, will become available at once. And I know I don't have time to read them all. So, um, the ones that I don't have time for, I just send back to the next person and then I'll get it again when when they're done with it which is awesome so if it is an ebook you can have it direct delivered directly to your kindle or i think that'll work with any e-reader that you use whether you use a nook or or whatever you use um your library will direct 
will deliver it directly to your device. You don't have to go pick it up. And, and this is handled through the app. Um, so I use a Kindle personally. So what happens for me is um, when the book appears in Libby and I check it out and I ask to deliver it, um, it actually takes me to Amazon uh, because Kindle is an Amazon thing. And then Amazon, I, I have Amazon deliver it to my device. So I assume if you're using a Nook, it's going to take you to the Barnes & Noble site. If that's how that works, I don't know. Um, so it might work a little differently depending on the e-reader you use, but you should be able to have it delivered to your device. You don't need to go anywhere. And also there's no chance of ever having late fees because once your uh, check, once your time with the book is over, I forget what it's called, um, your loan, once your loan is over, um, it's automatically returned to the library. Um, so there's no chance of you taking it back late. It just automatically goes back. Now, something that's really interesting and cool, I'd, I assume this works the same for other e-readers, but I can only speak to Kindle because that's what I use. But, um, you know, if I check a book out, like let's say I check out on writing and I check out the ebook, and let's say I, I only read half of it and maybe I'm highlighting parts of it or taking notes in it and things like that. And then it returns to the library. If I later check it out again, the Kindle will remember where I was at, what page I was on. It will remember all of my highlights and notes I took. So it's super nice if, if you need more than one um, loan period to finish it. And, you know, maybe they're split up, like maybe someone gets it next and then you get it back or something. Um, it does save your progress and any notes that you took or, or anything like that, which is super cool. And I, I assume that works for any e-reader, but I know for sure it works with a Kindle. If it's an audio book, you actually listen to it in the Libby app itself. So you can listen to the book there and it, it's got all the features that you'd expect in an audio book player. You can jump to whatever chapter you want. It tells you the runtime, how much time you've got left, all that good stuff. And again, just like with the ebooks, when the audiobook is due, it just returns automatically. You don't have to do anything. So there's zero chance that you're ever going to incur any kind of a late fee um, with ebooks or audiobooks using this, this system. Now, obviously, again, a physical book, you have to physically take back to the library. You can also renew books in the app. So, you know, if you need more time, you can renew it all without having to go to the library. And also another thing that's really cool is you can use the app to request books that your library doesn't have that you want. So let's say you, you go look for on writing and your library doesn't have it. Um, you can request it that they get a copy for you. And um, depending on the book and the demand, they will either get it through interlibrary loan which means they they actually borrow the book from another library. Um, if you went to college and, and did any kind of a research degree like, like I did, then you know all about this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they just borrow the book from another library and then you get to check it out. Um, or um, a lot of times if there's enough people that want that particular book, they'll just buy a copy or multiple copies. You can also specify if you want the physical book or the ebook or the audiobook, and then they'll try to get that that version. And like I said, there there are no fees to get the app. The app is free. There's no fees to get a library card um, to check out books, ebooks, audiobooks. Um, late fees aren't going to be an issue with the audiobooks or ebooks because they're returned automatically. So it, it's super convenient, and in a lot of ways, it's better than physically going to the library because you have no chance of uh, getting late fees, and you don't have to go anywhere. Um, and you don't have to take the book back, physically go take the book back. So yeah, I, I know a lot of you that listen to this show listen to audiobooks. And um, audiobooks are pretty expensive. You know, they're usually around $50 or more to buy an audiobook. Um, so especially if you're if you read a lot of audiobooks, um, this can save you a lot of money. Now I will tell you, you know, I'm sure this experience is the same, you know, even if you're just using a library traditionally, but, but if you're trying to get a new book, um, you know, you're going to be waiting a while. Uh, for instance, I, I have a hold on Andy Weir's new book, um, Project Hail Mary. And I think right now 
the app is estimating 22 weeks. I'm going to have to wait for that, which again, it will be a lot less than that because people don't always keep it for two weeks. But yeah, you know, it's, it's a new book and it's really popular. So everybody wants it. So there's a lot of people in line. However, a lot of times if there is a lot of demand, libraries will get more copies. So, you know, that could be another reason why um, you get things sooner than, than what you think is because they went and got more copies. And one other thing that's nice in the app that I really, really highly recommend and ask that, that you do is if you finish something early, so, you know, you check a book out for two weeks, if you finish it before the two weeks is over, um, an ebook or an audiobook, you can actually return it in the app early, which means that the next person waiting gets it sooner, they, you know, w- which is nice. And, and I always try to do that if I ever finish a book and I'm done with it, I just return it right away. Um, so the next person can get it. So yeah, it's just a nice thing to do. I mean, if you're done with it, why why keep it? And again, that's another way that's better than just going to a library. Because I know, I mean, it's been forever since I went to a library and checked out a physical book. But I remember when I used to, that, you know, a lot of times I would get a stack of books. And I wouldn't go back to return those books until I'd finished all of them. Because, you know, I had to go to the library, like physically go to the library So, you know, that first book I read would be sitting there, you know, I've already read it, I'm done with it, but it's sitting there and someone else can't use it just because I have to physically take it back and I'm going to wait till I finish all my books. So, so this is nice because you can actually return something as soon as you're done with it, which means people don't have to wait so long, which means you don't have to wait so long for whatever you're waiting for. So yeah, um, I I thought I'd share that with you because, because again, I, I talk to people all the time that have no idea this is a thing, um, you know, you can get all the ebooks you can read, you can get all the audiobooks you can listen to um, for free. And, you know, if you want to support authors, which is awesome, then, you know, you can always buy um, the things you want to buy. Um, for instance, I've, I've listened to On Writing twice now, the audiobook. Uh, the first time I listened to it through Audible, um, I got like their f- trial where you get a free book and that was the free book I got. Um, that was years ago before I wrote my, my second novel. And then this last time I got the auto audio book from my library and I finished it and I returned it and now I have it on hold again cause I want to listen to it again. But that book, I'm, I'm going to buy it. I'm already going on my third time listening to it and I know I'm going to want to listen to it again and again. And so, and I want to support Stephen King. So uh, I want to buy it and own a copy. I just can't decide if I want to get the audio version or the print version or both. I mean, I think I definitely want the audio version. Well, I know I definitely want the audio version because Stephen King reads it and he, he does a great job reading it. I just can't decide if I want the the print version too. I just think, you know, if I if I want to go back and check a specific thing, it would be easier to do that with the print version. But then I think, will I ever really need to do that or want to do that? I don't know. Yeah. And then if I get the audio version, I'm trying to decide, well, I'm, I definitely want to get the audio version, but I'm trying to decide if I should just buy it from like Amazon or if I should get it through Audible. Because my only concern with Audible is... Well, no, I think once I, if I just flat out buy it from Audible, I think I can have it forever uh, without having to be subscribed. Because Audible is a subscription thing. Like you have to pay so much a month. And that's why I don't like about it, you know? So I have to look into that. If I can just buy on writing and listen to it whenever, and I don't have to subscribe to Audible to listen to it because I already bought it, which I think that's how it works, then maybe I'll go that route. But otherwise, I'll I'll just buy it from Amazon. But yeah, so, you know, if you really like a book, you can still buy, you can still buy it, whether you buy an ebook or physical book or audiobook or whatever. But, you know, especially if you're someone like me who reads a lot and is trying to read as many books as they can, um, it, you know, if you're buying all those, it, it gets expensive really fast. So yeah, if you're a prolific reader, the library can, can save you a lot of money and then you can still buy the books you really like to support the authors that you really like. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Again, apologies to those of you who already knew about it. Although I imagine 
um, you're in the minority. Just again, from my own experience, it seems like most people don't know about this. Um, I, I know the library here is constantly trying to promote it <laughs> to, to get people to realize that they can do this. So I have a feeling that it's something that is underused. Um, so yeah, the, the more people we can tell about this and the more people we can get using it, um, the better, because, you know, sometimes when things aren't used, uh, they go away, especially, you know, something like libraries where, you know, cost is always an issue to them. Um, they're always, you know, struggling to, to fund everything. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is rather expensive for them. You know, audiobooks are expensive. Ebooks are not much, if any, cheaper than print books. And then, you know, having the technology and software to serve this out to you, I'm, I'm sure that's all, you know, quite a bit of money that they pay for this. So uh, if people aren't using it, it may go away. So if you're interested, definitely check it out, definitely use it. And also, if you know of anyone that you think would be interested in this and you're not sure if they know about it, please tell them because uh, it's an awesome thing. It's win-win for everyone. All right. So, uh, that's going to wrap it up today. Um, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at lexoutloudpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow me at on Twitter <laughs> at Lex Starwalker. And you can call my voicemail, 951-465-5391. That's 951-465-5391. And finally, please join our community on Discord. You can find the links to that in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com slash L-O-L. And finally, if you would like to support the show and what I'm doing, I really appreciate it. There are a lot of ways you can do so. I've got those all uh, explained to you on the support page at starwalkerstudios.com slash support. Um, among those is our Patreon. And patrons get early access to new episodes and also get access to a special writer's room in our Discord server for, well, talking about writing or whatever you want to talk about. So uh, yeah, you can find the link to Patreon there as well at starwalkerstudios.com slash support. Well, thank you so much for listening and uh, go go check out your library, see what they got going on and, and get some good ebooks and or audiobooks. And yeah, that'll keep you busy until uh, next time. And until then, keep writing and reading.